Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be giving you an update on the pattern. We're going to have a relatively cold pattern over the next few uh, days and even weeks. Uh, this is going to last even through December, uh, at least through early and mid-December, where we're going to see these continuous shots of cold air. It's not going to be always cold so we will have some days of some warmer temperatures sprinkled in between those colder days but for the majority I would say about 75 percent of your days it will be below average in the eastern United States uh, and we're going to be talking about that discussing why that's happening uh, and just talking again generally about uh, the pattern we'll take you through the high temperatures for this week so that you can plan out uh, your Thanksgiving week and uh, we'll have a bunch more in today's video. Uh, again, so make sure you are staying tuned all the way until the end. Here's a look at our weather photo of the day. This, uh, these couple pictures were sent in by Hayden. He actually sent in a few, so I'm going to be featuring them over the next couple of days. These are just a, just two of the five that he sent in from central Idaho, showing a few of his uh, favorite snow pictures that he has taken over the years. Uh, the one on the left was taken from his school uh, in a storm that dropped about two feet of snowfall, uh, or actually about a foot of snowfall, uh, over that area, uh, and he lives in the foothills, so he lives in west central, uh, west central Idaho, uh, so he is a little bit higher up in elevation, uh, right as the higher elevations are starting to kind of mount up there, uh, and so again, this is a one foot snowstorm, uh, on the left side, and then on the right side, the one of the foothills, uh, that was a storm that dropped two feet of snowfall, uh, during that one, uh, and you can see, of course, the mountains uh, in the background, which, personally, this is my favorite of the five that he sent in, and again, I'm going to be featuring more of these over the next couple of days, uh, and that's assuming that, of course, we don't get any extra weather photo of the weather photos uh, that you guys sent in, uh, send in. If you guys do get any more weather photos that you want to send in, uh, send them over to my email address. It's Eli, the weather guy, yt at gmail.com. And it's also in the description down below. Uh, just write a general area from where you took that photo from so that we have an idea for when I feature it on the channel. So here's a look at what the current National Weather Service page looks like. You can see that in terms of watches and warnings, it's actually relatively quiet right now. We have a few winter weather advisories up for California, a couple red flag warnings in Southern California, and then we have some wind advisories scattered throughout the Southwest as well as some parts of Florida, uh, maybe into some parts of uh, Montana. But again, in terms of anything significant, we really don't have uh, too much going on today. And that's really too noteworthy. So, again, it's a fairly quiet uh, weather day here. Uh, yesterday, we had a high temperature of 88 degrees in Rio Grande Village, Texas. The low temperature was 6 degrees at Mount Washington, New Hampshire. Uh, the highest rainfall report was in Palm Beach uh, International Airport in Florida, where they got 3.18 inches. Uh, and the highest snowfall report was just 0.4 inches of snow in Park City, Utah. So, again, even the extremes are really not that extreme. Uh, uh, highest snowfall report less than half an inch, highest rainfall report around 3 inches, uh, lowest temperature only around 6 degrees. So again, it was a fairly quiet uh, day yesterday, and it looks like that's going to continue uh, in terms of at least precipitation. We will see a couple of storms. We're going to have one storm uh, that's going to go through for uh, tonight into tomorrow, and that could bring a little bit of rain uh, into the, the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. We're going to have another storm uh, for late week, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, and we'll talk about that more as we get closer to it. So there will be a couple opportunities for snow and rain over the next few days, uh, but again, it, these are not going to be huge storms either way, and I think the bigger issue is going to be uh, the temperatures, and that's going to become the bigger story. So let's start taking a look at the high temperatures. Again, these are the high temperatures for these given days. This is for tomorrow, and you can see that the high temperatures are only going to get into the 30s, uh, for much of the Great Lakes, the Midwest, and even the interior northeast. This is ahead of the front that's moving through. So you can see that your low pressure system would be right here. You have your cold front right around there, and then you have somewhat of a uh, warm front. Again, it's not the usual warm front considering that we're in November, but it is still warmer than average in many of these areas along the coastal northeast and New England 
where you'll be rising up uh, into the lower 50s, so rather mild into those spots. And if you get into the southeast, it might even get down uh, or get up into the 60s. If you live in the central and southern plains, also getting up into the 60s. So really, the only area that's going to be colder is going to be the interior northeast, the Great Lakes, uh, and the Midwest. So these are the areas that, again, could be maybe a couple degrees on the colder side of things. Moving this on to Tuesday, which is November 23rd, uh, you can see that we're looking at the, that front passing by uh, the eastern United States. So it is cooling down, especially if you live in the coastal northeast compared to what it was on Monday. Now you're dropping down into the low 30s and even some upper 20s uh, in terms of the high temperatures. Again, these are the high temperatures. If we were to look at the low temperatures, they are going to be down in the 20s and teens for most spots. And wind chill temperatures could drop into the teens or single digits over many areas uh, over the next couple of days because it will be windy so you add on the wind and the cold air uh, and when you get that combination of course you will uh, see um, some amount of uh, drop in the wind chill so again you could be seeing some rather cold feels like temperatures so even though the actual temperature might be let's say 30 degrees it could still feel like 20 degrees or even 15 degrees if you have a strong enough wind so you want to actually be looking at what the wind chills will be when you're trying to prepare uh, what you're going to wear when going to work or to school or wherever you're going to be going uh, because that's going to that's going to be what you actually feel you're not going to feel the 30 degree temperature you're going to feel the 20 or the 15 degree wind wind chill uh, because of the wind added on. Here's Wednesday, so the day right before Thanksgiving, and you'll see a little bit of a thaw. You're going to be uh, in a bit of a warmer pattern or a little bit of a warmer environment. As we get into Wednesday, uh, the only exception would be New England and also the Midwest. Uh, you see that for much of the eastern half of the country, you're getting up into the 50s for some spots, uh, even some 60s as you get further uh, to the south, and maybe even some 70s down in the southern plains. Now, you do see another storm developing right around Thursday, so this is the next one that I was talking about uh, in the introduction to the video that we could see potentially some amount of rain or snow with this event and again we're going to be covering this as we get closer to that storm uh, but it will leave behind some colder temperatures for Thanksgiving if you live west of this line roughly roughly if you live west of this line this is where you'll be in those colder temperatures that's going to include parts of the northern plains as well as for the central plains now one disclaimer this is only counting the high temperature so this is the highest temperature that you see during that day now i would think that the line is actually closer to here in terms of by i would say 6 p.m these are what the colder temperatures are going to be at so the colder temperatures uh, are probably going to be right around the ohio valley and the tennessee valley by the evening on thursday so when you're having your thanksgiving dinner it's probably going to be a lot colder than 60 degrees especially if you live in the tennessee valley the ohio valley or the great lakes because because, again, what this model is doing, all it's doing is looking at every single hour of the day, picking out which hour had the highest temperature, and then plotting that on the on the map. So let's say if your high temperature came at 1 a.m., again, a lot of people are not going to be awake at that time to even feel that maybe 50 or 60 degree temperature. But if that cold front passes at 4 or 5 a.m., well, you've just basically had your high temperature at one in the morning and now you're going to see your temperatures gradually dropping throughout the day so this is the one day where i think that the high temperature is going to be a little bit misleading on this map because even though technically your high temperature let's say in texas is going to be 60 degrees once that front passes you're going to be down at the 40s and especially as you get further to the north you'll be down into the 30s and the 20s so thanksgiving day especially if you live pretty much from the ohio valley on westward it's probably going to be a lot colder than what you see on the high temperature so if you check your weather app it might still say your high temperature is going to be 50 degrees but again you want to actually check more of the hourly temperature so i would definitely check the hourly setting and then see when the temperatures actually drop because once that front passes by uh, it's going to turn cold at least for another couple of days this will be for friday and this is after the front passes by most areas it still hasn't fully passed through the coastal northeast so they're going to stay up into the mid 40s or the 50s but it is in the 30s if you live uh, up into the northern plains the great lakes the ohio valley and the interior northeast uh, so relatively cold over those areas and then the front fully 
fully passes by the entire eastern half of the country by Saturday, which is November 27th, and then we see those colder temperatures really setting in, so you're down into the 30s if you live in the Great Lakes or the Northeast. The, south, the Southeast also cooling down, so high temperatures will only be into the upper 50s over those areas, and then the southern plains will still stay relatively warm compared to the rest of the country, but in terms of their average, they will probably be a couple degrees on the cooler side of things, only getting up into the low 60s for those spots. Here before Sunday, which is November 28th, and just to kind of play this through a little bit more, you can see that that pattern would kind of stick in where you have that trough in the east, and it doesn't look like that's going to budge too much. We might see that, again, occasional storm, which comes in from the northwest and then moves across the the country and ahead of that storm you might see colder temperatures but expect that right behind the storm you're going to see another plunge of cold air so we're not going to see anything really that consistent in terms of warm air out of the out of these next couple of days Here's a look at the upper air map because this is going to visualize it a little bit better for you guys. So this is for tomorrow, and you can see that we have that system uh, dropping into the east. We have rain uh, and even some snow uh, dropping into the northeast. The snow would mainly be confined to the Great Lakes or the interior northeast in the higher elevations. Otherwise, it's going to be mainly a rain event for a lot of these spots. Uh, so it is colder into that area. One of the reasons that's also happening and one of the reasons that this trough is so deep into the eastern United States is because we have a high pressure system which is really amplified over the west. So that really amplified high pressure system is allowing for a amplified low pressure system in the east to kind of counterbalance uh, that. So the stronger the high pressure in the west, the uh, the deeper the low pressure in the east and vice versa. Uh, so again, if you have a really strong high pressure in the east, you'd probably see a really deep low pressure in the west. That's generally how things go because the atmosphere is trying to reach an even status, so it needs to kind of counterbalance any extreme anomalies. This is before Tuesday, and you can see that everything's moving across, but pay attention to up in Canada because this is where all the cold air is coming from. This is where all our our systems are starting up from, and you can notice how it's pretty much entirely under that blue or green color indicating that it is colder in those areas so we have a little ridge in the uh, central United States but in terms of where our cold air is coming from that area is staying cold and it's not really going to switch up anytime soon we're going to continue to see that move down uh, into the United States so every single time you see a little trough like this into Washington or Oregon or British Columbia that's going to be a little storm and once that storm moves to the east it's going to bring behind it a bunch of that cold air which is sitting up into western Canada. So if we move this on, you can see that maybe you get a bit of warmer air as we head towards Thanksgiving in the eastern United States. Again, Wednesday is going to be much warmer than uh, Thanksgiving itself. So it is fairly warm on Wednesday, but look at where we are for uh, Thanksgiving, uh, especially in the early afternoon is when this would be valid for. You have that trough into the central United States, and it extends almost towards uh, Michigan and Indiana. So it would be somewhere around that area where those colder temperatures would reach by Thanksgiving evening. Uh, and then as we move to uh, Friday, you can see it does become a bit colder into the eastern United States. We have this negatively tilted trough, uh, so that means that we have that storm tilted towards uh, the northwest, which is probably one of the colder uh, signs that you can have, especially in an area like the mid-Atlantic or the northeast, because you have a strong northwesterly breeze coming straight up from the Midwest and the uh, and parts of central Canada. So that is a fairly cold breeze, uh, and look how tightly packed these lines are. These lines of equilibrium uh, or equal pressure they're really tightly packed meaning that we will have some wind being generated throughout that area and then if we move this on to Saturday uh, you can see that we do have that colder air still into the eastern United States and if you look up into Canada you can start to see that next little area of cold air starting to form up we have high pressure building into the west so even if we were to continue this on you can see that there really would not be a lot of change we would probably see maybe again one or two days of warmer temperatures followed by 
three or four or five days of colder temperatures. So it is going to be an interesting pattern to follow. I will be keeping you updated on the channel if anything does change. And again, with those storms which are expected to move into the Great Lakes and the Northeast, I will keep you updated in terms of snowfall and rainfall forecasts. That is going to wrap it up for today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.